Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one. It's joy, always joy to be on at this hour. Praise the Lord. Yes, God is love. God loves us and we love him. And we're supposed to love each other. God is love. God is love. It's a good thing to love. I want to tell us today that our love should be genuine. We cannot do a fake kind of love whereby we pretend. So many things in this world is now fake. Everything fake. But as children of God, our love should be real for one another. It should be genuine. We are not supposed to pretend. I pray that God of mercy will help us. And um, most of it all, I want to talk today about forgiveness. Asking God for forgiveness and forgiving each other and forgiving ourselves. It's a good thing to forgive. Many prayers are not answered because of unforgiveness. We have to pray for the grace to forgive. The Bible said the Holy Spirit shed the love of Christ in our hearts. And that is why forgiveness, we need the Holy Spirit to help us. It's not always easy. But it is a good thing to be able to forgive others. I want to read the example of Joseph. That's a very good example. How he treated his brothers after they sold him into slavery. After they went home to lie that he was dead. They sold him out. They thought they would never ever see him again. But by God's special grace, and the presence of God with Joseph that preserved him. They were able to see him again. I read from Genesis 45. Um, then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him. While Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He made himself known. He let them know that I'm your brother. In verse 4 and 5, in order to save time, then Joseph said to his brother, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold unto Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry. Do not be angry with yourself for selling me here because it was so, it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. So he, 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 he made them comfortable. He forgave them. He already forgave them in his heart. And in verse 9, he said, in verse 9, now hurry back to my father and say to him, you shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Oh my God. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. Look, this was a great opportunity for Joseph to revenge, to say, now you sold me onto slavery. I'm now a governor in charge of food to so many nations. I'll make sure you suffer. He did not do that. He told them that he found the reason why God did it, to save lives. And so I will still bless you. That's what you did to me. Oh, my God, this is wonderful. And when we skip, because of time, to chapter 50, in verse 19 to 21, uh, Genesis Chapter 50, verses 19 to 21. He says there, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring, God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. So then, don't be afraid. 
I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. They offended him. They sold him. They hated him. They were jealous of him. But when the opportunity came, every opportunity to you find where you meet the people that have offended them, show them the kind love of God. That changes more than judging and telling them you did this. They didn't know. Father, remember Jesus? Father, forgive them. They didn't know what they are doing. They do not know what they are doing. Please. He, he, look at what Joseph did. He forgave his brothers. He talked kindly to them. He even said he would provide for them. He didn't reward evil for evil. He used good to overcome evil. And look what God said. He said, beloved, in 1 John 4, verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. People may make mistakes. Situations may happen that people who do not know do other things. But we that know, we have, to, we have to show love of God, genuine, true love of God. Um, I want to read that story of that servant, I think, uh, of that servant who did not forgive his own mate. I, that story is in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I opened my Bible to Matthew chapter 18. He owed his master a lot of money, and he could not pay. And he begged his master, please forgive me. And his master forgave him. And now his fellow slave to now owed him money, and he made sure that that slave went to jail because he said, you have to give me my money. He forgot what the, his master did for him. That's what we do. We forgot that God forgave us. He sent his only begotten son to come and die for our sake, to come and become sin so that we can become righteous. He did that for us. He paid the price. He became man and came down to this earth. He left all the riches of heaven and came down to suffer so that we can be forgiven. Why will we not forgive our fellow human beings when the master forgave us? It's the same story. I'll read it to you in Matthew chapter 18. I think it's in verse 21. Matthew chapter 18 in the New Testament. If you are reading along with me, Matthew chapter 18 is not a long story. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Uh, from verse 21, it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which will take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Don't worry, don't pay it anymore, I forgive you. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Look, little money compared to what his master forgave him. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe me. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet. The same thing he did to their master. And besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he will not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. 
Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you ask me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servants, even as I had pity on you? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him unto the tormentors till he should pay all that it was due unto him. So, verse 35, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Look, tormentors can be sickness. Tormentors can be lack and want. Tormentors can be unemployment. Tormentors can be hardship. Tormentors can be suffering. Tormentors can be illness, sickness, infirmity. We have to forgive. I will tell a little story. I was in a hospital setting and I, I got a word of knowledge for a patient. She had liver failure, kidney failure. And I moved close to her to tell her, I said, look, I feel in my spirit that you are holding some people down that, and that is holding you down. You have someone very close to you that you did not forgive, and that's part of why you are sick. Will you be able to forgive this person? He said, true, true, true. I have not spoken to my mom in 10 years. She offended me, and I vowed that I will never speak to her. I said, okay, now, will you speak to her? Will you just forgive her? Whatever she has done to you is not up to what, what, um, what Jesus, what they did to Jesus. Can you forgive? She said yes. So she started looking for her phone number to call her cousin who knew the number of where the mother was because she has not contacted her in 10 years. And as she began to do that, not long, a doctor came into the room. This is real life story. It's not something we read or something that was told. A, a, a doctor came to the room and said, oh, we need to do your blood work. Guess what? The return of that blood work, the doctor came to talk to her afterwards. You do not need any more dialysis. Your BUN and creatinine are back to normal. Your kidneys are functioning right. Just a little bit of a step. She had not even called the mother. She just proposed, determined in her heart to forgive her mother. It's very good to forgive. I pray today that anything, anything that is stopping you, any power holding you, it might be what they have done. It might be, oh, I, I cannot. It might be pride, whatever it is, that that thing will give way today. And the Holy Spirit will help you and me to forgive no matter what they have done. And I pray today that the, anybody that we have hurt or that we have wounded their soul because of what we have done, that God Almighty will heal them and forgive us in the name of Jesus. And anyone that has wounded us or caused us things that we have decided, oh, I cannot see myself being with them anymore. May the Almighty God heal us. And, uh, and restore the relationship in the mighty name of Jesus. Unforgiveness is not a good thing. It's like taking a poison and expect somebody else to suffer the poison that we put in our system. It is a very good thing to forgive. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 6, in let's turn our Bibles, please turn with me to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. Please turn with me to Matthew Chapter 6. Jesus said we have to forgive. Matthew 6, verse 12. And forgive in the, in the um, daily prayer that we pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that we will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Verse 12 says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We are expected to forgive whoever offends us so that God will forgive us. It is very, very important that we forgive. When we move down to verse 14, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That means if we do not forgive, 
God will not forgive us. And do you know what? God does not listen to prayers of sinners. But you remember what 1 John 1 9 says? That if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we can go to our father and ask for forgiveness, he's a just father, he's a faithful father, he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Once we ask God, so when other people ask us for forgiveness, we forgive them. We cannot hold them so that we not too will not be held. Forgiving others is absolutely necessary so that our prayers can be answered, so that we can have a good, close relationship with our Father in heaven. If Jesus says we must forgive. We have to forgive. We just have to forgive. We have no option. Put all bitterness and anger away. That's what Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32 tells us. Get rid of all bitterness. Do not let anything that somebody has done to you take a bitter root in you. Let it go. The Bible says offense must surely come. People will offend you, but you have to learn not to take offense and also to be able to forgive. It's a very good thing. It is a very good thing. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave us. We have to forgive each other. That's the example Jesus told us. And the Bible says we have to be imitators of Jesus. If Jesus forgave us, came to become our, we were sinners. He took our sin, he exchanged it, he forgave us. We, have, we ought to forgive others. Ephesians 5 1 says, Be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We have to forgive. We have to forgive. You remember the story of the prodigal son? He took all, the father was still alive, he said, give me everything. I want to go. He went to live a reckless life. But when he was coming by, his father had open hand. He celebrated him. He forgave right away. He came back and the father forgave him. We ought to forgive. We ought to forgive. That's how we should treat any repentant sinner. Anybody that ask us for forgiveness, we have to forgive. And in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, the Bible says, when you stand praying, if, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your heavenly father may forgive you your sins. Even since as, as much as if we go to, to, to give our offering, if we remember that somebody has done something wrong to us, we should leave that offering there, go and make up first, and then we come back. That's how deep love is to God, that we should love each other. We cannot say we love him when we don't love our fellow brethren. And uh, you remember all those love does not, love does not in 1 Corinthians 13? When you get to the fifth one, you say, love keeps no record of wrongs. You forgive, you forgive and forgive and forgive and do as if it never even occurred. That's what God does. When we go to God and ask for forgiveness, he wipes it off. He said, he separates, he separates us from our sin as far as east is to the west. And he puts our sins into sea of forgetfulness. We should do as if it never occurred. It's not that we start saying, hey, three years ago, you did this. So last year, you did this. You remember what you did five years ago? Six months ago, you what you did? Now you've done this one again. God said that's not godly. We shouldn't do that. Don't keep records of wrong. Forgive people as fast as you can. Forgive people fast. Be slow to hold grudges. Don't hold any grudge. Yes, that's what God... So we have to restore. He said love covers, it overlooks a multitude of sins. First Peter 4, 8, it overlooks it. We have to forgive a repentant sinner and affirm our love. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, I read, Now, instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him, 
so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. When we forgive, we are with Satan. Look at what Satan does. He wants us to fight each other so we can come together and, 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 and praise God and be able to say, our father. He didn't say, my father in heaven, alone be thy name. He said, our father. So I pray today that in any relationship that has been hurt or anywhere where there's rift, misunderstanding, even where you have vowed that I will never talk to him no more, to her no more, pick your phone, make amends, restore the relationship, God is love. Love is in action. Take an action. Make a step. Forgive. Forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. Yes, forgive is a special gift to be able to forgive. I want you to pray today to say, to say that you, your love will be genuine and you'll be, God will give you the grace, grant you the grace, special grace to be able to forgive others no matter what they have done to you, so that you'll be relieved. Some people say, but I've forgiven. But sometimes we forgive, but we do not sometimes um, disconnect ourselves from our soul, from what they have done to us. I pray today that any soul tie with what they did to you, that when you even remember that thing, you feel so bad, so even though you say you're forgiving this person, but you sit tied to what they did to you, that that will be broken today and you'll be totally free and you'll be able to say totally that I forgive and I love you regardless of what you have done because God is love and we must show love too. And by aspect of love is forgiveness. Forgive no matter what they have done. Only God is perfect. Make sure you forgive. Call that person, like whatever he's doing, do whatever you have to show that you are forgiven, send them gifts, do something. Just love, obey. We have to obey our Father. Our Father in heaven, he said we should obey him. These are what he wants us to do. He wants us to live in love. He wants us to forgive and forget no matter what they have done. Yes, I pray today that God Almighty will help you and me to forgive those that have offended us and will help those that that says we have offended them to forgive us too in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will heal them and they'll be restored in the name of Jesus and that we'll be able to fellowship together again. Some people, the relationship is between husband and wife. Some is between families, cousins, father and sons, daughters and mom or whatever, grandmom and for whatever reason, but we can forgive. We are able to forgive. God will not tell us things to do things that he thinks we cannot do. He knows that we can forgive. He came down here and be a man. So he knows. He has been like us. So please today, I pray that you will do that and be able to forgive. God bless you. May the Lord keep you and uh, show his grace towards you in the mighty name of Jesus. Love do not hate. Hallelujah. Be blessed.